All right. All right, thank you, Eric. So our next speaker is Nick Davis. So Nick Davis is the faculty chair of corporate innovation at Singularity University. You're hearing from all our innovation and leadership experts this afternoon. Uh, with that, please join me in welcoming to the stage, Nick Davis. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. How are we doing? Good, 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 good. Uh, my name is Nick Davis, as Will said. I lead our enterprise division globally for Singularity. I've got you for about 15 minutes. I'm going to take you through a new initiative that we're rolling out this year and show you one of our latest models and methodologies that we'll be going deeper in uh, tomorrow's workshops. But I'm going to give you a little hint of that content, show you some of the research that we've been doing uh, across our corporate innovation faculty, and uh, hopefully uh, showcase new stuff for you. Sound good? Okay. Um, what I've got up here is uh, a new initiative that we're calling our Future of Innovation Memo. And so ultimately what we're aiming to do is uh, publish a thought leadership piece every year where we're collecting the work that we've done from August to August with our corporate clients, a nat or an annual survey that we're going to be doing, and I'll show you some of the results from that, as well as the latest research and insights that our faculty are bringing uh, to bear in the, the work that we're publishing. Uh, we'll gather those insights here from Summit, uh, again, during that workshop tomorrow, and then we'll publish the thought leadership uh, and uh, do a webinar as well. So uh, you'll see that coming if you follow our enterprise newsletter, uh, but I'll show you some of that as we go forward. I uh, wanted to do a call out for my two co-conspirators on this particular project, so Bill O'Connor and Kyle Hermans, uh, two of our other faculty that you'll see here at Global Summit. Uh, I believe they're in the room right now, uh, but they've uh, been kind of my partner in crime on this as we publish some of this research. So. A fun quote for you. Uh, we often get asked, what is corporate innovation management, right, in the lens of singularity? And ultimately, as you can imagine, we're focused on the future, right? How do we think about a structured process, a way to innovate as an organization, while we take that lens of the future into account? And so for us, we're always working with our clients to envision that far off future and then bring it back to today. But we're looking a lot these days around what makes these initiatives successful over time, right? Envisioning that future without an execution plan is still very, very difficult to do. And so we'll talk a lot about some of the components that we're seeing uh, help organizations be successful. A lot of it's mindset, leadership, as Eric had referenced. So this past year, our teams around the world did engagements with 133 global brands. Uh, in the current survey I'll show you, we've done 126 interviews with innovation leaders around the world and then ultimately brought forward the faculty insights and research that we're doing every day. So a lot of work, a lot of insights, a lot of experience that we're seeing from our clients that we try and bring forward to Summit and showcase some of that latest work, and we'll update it every year. So the one question that we've actually found the most interesting results for, and I wanted to bring it forward for the first model that we'll showcase. Regarding the future of innovation, what inputs influence the way that you innovate most? Now, our survey respondents were able to select multiple choices, which is why these don't add up to 100, but it gives you a really good view of people. Our mindset, how we're approaching this problem, continues to be the most important factor for how we're seeing success versus failure when we think about navigating that future ahead. So for us, it was really important to notice this. So we spent the last month or so actually developing a new framework around the exponential innovator mindset, which I'll show you here. And then again, we'll do some deeper work in it with the workshop tomorrow. Hopefully this is uh, surprising to you all as well. So one part of this that we wanted to do was bring real life exponential innovators to bear and showcase some of the amazing work that they're doing. So uh, hopefully some of you are in the room right now. Of all the selections that we received in the survey, some of the amazing work going on around our global community, here's the top five that we felt really exonified. What is exponential innovation today? And we'll be publishing more thought leadership around each one of their five projects coming soon. But we wanted to highlight their amazing work and say, and say thank you for responding to the survey. For Tom, Janet, Victor, Laura, and Albert. Right? So some overarching themes. So what we really heard was that mindset, as I said, who and what we are, how we're actually thinking about the innovation work that we're doing is really one of the most important facets, factors, for how we're thinking about being successful in the future. But one of the other ones was we talk a lot about moonshots, but ultimately what we see a lot from our clients is that 
they're still doing a lot of incremental work, right? The ways that we're investing, the ways that we're actually still trying to navigate ahead is still very, very incremental in execution. And so matching up those two, right, the far off vision for the moonshots and then investing there appropriately is still one of the bigger learnings that we're seeing. And so for us, I'll show you some of the ways that we think about that, but it's a big lesson learned across our client bases. And then meaningful innovation. One consistent thing that we saw from a lot of our survey respondents was focusing on the positive, what we call global grand challenges. It was amazing for us to see that most organizations now are saying, I don't just want to have an amazing economic output, I want to make a positive impact in the world. And we're seeing that more and more often with all of our clients. And because of the technologies that we're all here to focus on today, it allows us to do that, right? We can focus in solar and also get the best outcome, right? So here's the framework that we're going to talk about. We're going to go in depth for a couple of examples here. And so what we've done is put together basically kind of an innovation to innovation framework and think about the different ways that we have to change the way that we think about the world and how we can actually apply these learnings. So first one. So innovation being, this is the way that we see a lot of the world coming at the problems and we want to move ourselves, our culture, our people, to this exponential innovation mindset, right? Now, throughout these next three days, you're going to hear a lot of, you know, the incremental, blah, to the exponential, right? You'll hear that time and time and time again, obviously, because that's the main mantra here at Singularity University. But really living into that is very, very difficult, right? It requires us to invest in a new way, to take chances, to really go at this problem of exponential change of speed in a whole new way. Speed, right? Faster and faster times, faster and faster disruption, and the majority of our clients in every industry are really facing this problem, right? So it's going to be funny for me to say this, but tech-focused, moving towards people-focused, right? The technologies are tools applied in the right way. They solve a lot of problems. But we can't forget the people in each one of these, right? Who and what we're building for is an absolutely critical step that we have to make sure that we're keeping them involved, right? So activity. A lot of people talk about innovation theater. There's a lot of things that have been going on in the press here recently around, you know, I collect a lot of ideas. We engage a lot of people. We invest a lot of money in the innovation projects that we're doing. What is the net output, right? What is the achievement that we were able to do, no matter how large your innovation system or process or operations is, if you're not launching new products or services or value to the market, it ultimately is going to fail, right? So turning your attention and focus over towards the output, the ROI, what are we building and launching in the market to create and sustain that value? So theoretical, so discussing concepts versus launching prototypes. We all intuitively sense, I think, that there's a lot of opportunity for us to say, you know, this would be a beautiful concept. This is a great thing that we should build. Someday we should. How are we going to think about turning on an engine that allows us to innovate much, much, much faster and build prototypes, experiment, launch them, and learn? Right? A little less talking, a lot more doing. Right? And then ultimately, idea negative. Right? How do we move towards this place where you know, the, the bad till proven good is now we're going to start from this place of great assumptions. This is an amazing idea. How do we disprove it? So often as you're collecting many of these ideas, you start to actually get into the system where you're a little bit scarcity mindset, right? How do we move towards that idea of abundance? We've got plenty of opportunity around this idea. We're going to support it until it's proven that it can't work. How can we run that experiment in the right way to be able to do that, right? And then, so, Prediction versus exploration. Now, we're futurists by the nature of what we do. Predicting out that future is obviously a role that we play right across our community. But exploring into it as an organization, not just looking at the macro trends and saying, okay, you know, we know because we can see certain economic trends going on around Wall Street or wherever it may be that we predict in the next two or three years, this is where our industry is going to go. That's a step. 
But ultimately, we have to be able to explore that unknown future ahead much more rapidly, right? We have to move into this exploration mindset. So we're always curious. We're always wondering. We're always pushing ourselves to be able to say, can that work? How can we actually leverage these technologies? How can we think of a new way to keep up with that speed, right? So conservation versus ideation. One thing that's really interesting, the more disruptable you see your industry being, say retail or banking, where there's a lot of different disruption going on,